So at this point we've been able to create a page and a post. Hopefully it's becoming a little more clear the difference. But the big thing that I see, or that I don't see, is that I posted this, uh, or that I published this page, but it's not visible. So we need to deal with the um, with the situation that perhaps your pages are not visible until they are in your menu. So let's go back. If you're if you're visiting your site like me, let's make sure we're still in the dashboard. So go to your dashboard. Hover your mouse over appearance. You get a bunch of things that we'll look at here. But the one we want to look at right now is menus. So hover over appearance and then click menus. And under menus, we have this screen here that's actually pretty powerful because later on we will be able to create, or we will see why it might be useful to create multiple menus for different purposes. But at, at the moment, at least for myself, I don't have any menus. It says create one. I don't have any menus yet. So here at the top, there's a lot of screens to, a lot of little boxes to look at, and I'll explain them, but it's got edit menus tab, menu name. Give your menu a name above, then click create menu. So I'll call this main menu. You can use spaces, you can use capital letters and such. So I'm going to call this main menu. And then I'm going to click on the right side, Create New. Create New Menu. Then the screen changes. At the top, you've got Edit Menus and Manage Locations. Well, here's the thing that, as I said, I'm going to say this over and over. It depends on your theme. Some themes have the ability to put a menu on the top. Some have it maybe along the left side maybe on the right side, maybe at the bottom. Some themes have the ability to, to do that on all four sides, or five sides. So depending on your menu, you have different positions where you can put your links. That's what Manage Locations is. On the left side, we tell it what to put in our menu. Don't worry just yet there. And then on the right side, we have Menu Structure and Menu Settings. Before we go further, this is what always confuses people. We might have added our menu items, we might have arranged them exactly how we want, we click save and we don't and we still don't see our menu. Here's the big thing that always happens. You don't have a theme location selected. This particular theme has a primary menu area and a social me social media links menu area. So let's turn on primary menu. Whatever items we add to this menu will exist in the primary menu which I believe on this theme is on the left side. And we've got Auto Add Pages. Automatically add new top-level pages to this menu. This seems to be helpful, but I don't recommend it. What this is saying is, okay, let's say I add my About Us page. Later on, I create Contact Us, Shop, Frequently Asked Questions, etc. I create a bunch more pages. If I do not add them to this menu, they will not show up on my site. So you think, okay, well, if we turn this on, it will automatically add all those pages. Great. That might help us for those four that I listed. But what if you create, for example, you're more advanced and you create landing pages. If you know about email marketing or social media marketing and you know about landing pages, we can create landing pages in WordPress but then it will automatically get added to our menu and we don't want that at all. A landing page should not be on a menu. If you don't know what any of that means, just trust me when I say don't turn this one on. It's going to give you problems compared to doing it manually. So you select your primary menu, we'll click Save Menu. And now we need items in our menu. We can add pages, custom links, categories. So if we had a category of pies, we can add that to our menu, and then we'll have a new clickable menu item that says pies. 
We've got custom links where we can add an address to anything we want, like over to, let's say you've got an Etsy shop. I can add my Etsy address and title it Etsy and then add it to the menu and it'll be part of my menu on this site. We've got pages, most recent, and view all. Let's go to view all. This shows me I've got the home page, the about page, which I call all about our amazing shop, and the sample page. So I want to add both the home page and the about page to the menu. That's found under view all. So select them both and then add to menu and they'll show up on the menu structure. So this, we, we look at it top to bottom, but depending on the theme, most likely it'll be left to right. The leftmost link on the menu will be home, the next one that comes over will be about, the next one will be whatever, whatever, whatever. So now I've got a menu structure with links. I've selected where does the menu go. It's in my primary menu. I've given it a name and I've saved it. Click Save if you haven't done so. And now let's visit site. That on the menu, on the left side now I have home and about. If I click on about, there's my about screen. And this is bold and highlighted to show me that I'm on that page. And there's my home button to go back home. That's right. And that would be under appearance. Yeah, I'm going to get back to it right now. So um, if it showed for you, great. If not, we'll go back to the menu, we'll go back to the menu editor uh, because I'll, I also want to show you a couple of things about the menu. So here I'm at the front end. And if you hover over the name of your site, this is a quick shortcut there, isn't it? You can go directly to menus. So you can go back to the dashboard and then navigate to find it, or you can go directly to one of these items. But I'll go the long way just to get used to it. I'm going to go back to the dashboard, then Appearance, Menus. The Menus is part of the appearance of the site. Once I go back to the Menus, my currently selected menu is the Main Menu, and I've got the Home and the About page. What I can do also is rearrange this. Maybe I want the, the about page to be first, so I just drag it up. You need to go here to the view all, and then you need to select the items to go to, onto your menu. So I can easily drag and drop my elements here and if I am more complex, I can also make sub-menus. <clears throat> Let's say I want to add a custom link. I've got home, I've got about, and I want a link over to, for, for fun, let's say Amazon. Amazon is not a link that is on my site. Pages will be all of the links on my site, but Amazon is a custom link. If you go to the custom links section, you type in a custom address. What text do you want to appear on the menu? And then add to menu. This is one of the things that you have to be careful about it. it happens so easily. Notice I want to rearrange. I've got home, about, Amazon. Let's say I wanted Amazon right after home. Well, if I click and drag and move it up here, I've got it above, I've got it next to home. But the problem here is because it's indented, it's actually a drop-down menu item. You can move things over so that they're indented and then they're drop-down menu items. If they're all aligned to the left side, they're all top-level elements, like that. And depending on your theme, you will see it more obviously or not. 
We see this in WordPress. When I hover over Victor's Bakery, I get a drop-down menu. When I hover over Pages, I get a drop-down menu. So everything that's indented to the far left is like here on WordPress that they're all the top-level links. Anything that is indented over, and you indent by just dragging it, anything that is indented is going to pop open when you hover over it. And some might pop over to the side, and some might pop below it. It depends on the theme. Yes? If you want to delete an item, you have to click on its little triangle at the end here, and then you have to remove. How do the uh, hovers uh, behave in a, a smartphone? It, it depends on the theme. It depends on the theme because some, um, most of these themes are, are based on JavaScript and such. And so if your smartphone can handle JavaScript, which most of them can nowadays, um, they should just open normally. Some will simply pop open, some will animate slowly or whatever. It depends on the theme. But um, I can't really say depending on the theme and depending on your smartphone. Yeah, I'm just, just thinking smartphone doesn't have a hover, you really have to click. Yes. Hover, right? That's right. So, um, yeah, most of the time you'll be clicking on your smartphone and that opens it up right. because there's no hover on the smartphone. Some themes here also don't have the hover. You do have to click and they'll pop open. So if you made any changes here, you want to remember to save just to show you this. I'm going to go over to visit site. This is how mine look. Just to just to test this, I have home and about, and I put Amazon indented. So notice this. It says there's a drop down there. And on this particular theme, I do have to click to open it. And then there's Amazon. There's other more extravagant themes that will animate, open, and have a drop shadow and all of that, but it depends on the theme. That's the point of indenting it. And if I click on Amazon, it'll take me to Amazon.com. Yes? Um, the way it is, uh, when you click on Amazon, you lose the uh, for your pipe. Because you you were open the page folder page. So there is a way to like have this as a click menu, like so open in different window. Yes, so if you notice that you often see that you're on a website and when you link to an external website, someone else's website, do you notice that it might open in a new window or a new tab? You might have also noticed that the behavior that we currently have is not that. If you click on Amazon, it goes to Amazon, and if I have a great time at Amazon and click on 10 screens, well, if I close Amazon, that would have closed my whole site. Well, the better thing to do is, let's go back to the menu. The better thing to do is to add the ability for links to open in their own window. And I don't know why, but WordPress makes it not hard, but a few steps to do that. Once you set these steps up the first time, then, however, they will work much faster. But here's the thing. If you go back to edit your menu, and you click the triangle of whatever link you want it to open in a new window, and really you only want that for external links. You don't want your About page to open a new window. You don't want your Products page to open a new window. You want Amazon to open a new window, Twitter, Etsy, whatever. We click the triangle so that we can edit that link, and we've got a few properties and such here, and this is the part here. We need to activate the ability to open in a new window. It's going to be right here, but it's, it's not on. This is a highly useful thing, so I'm still surprised why WordPress does not make it easy for us to do this. So, at the top right corner, you have Screen Options, that little tab. There's so many different settings and so many different options and boxes in WordPress that most of them are hidden from us. And those that are really important are usually visible. The ones that are hidden are up here on screen options. So this, the screen, often, screen options differ per page. 
every single one of these pages is going to have hidden options because there's so much WordPress, so many settings. So we're in the screen options of the menu, and, I, and we need to turn on link target. So the first item on the second row, link target, and now look at that. Open link in a new window or tab. When I turn that on and save it, now my links will op that link will open in a new tab, preventing people from leaving my site permanently. Question. The menu page? Yes. And then on the very top right corner, you have to click on the screen options. And then you turn on the link target. Well, like I said, let me let me show it to you instead of explaining it. I'm going to save it. I'm going to visit site. And then if I click on the Amazon link, look at the very top here, it'll open in a new tab. So now a person's on Amazon, they, they look at the award winners, they close Amazon, and they're still on my site. If we didn't turn that on and they close Amazon, they lost my site also. Should we just create a new menu? Yes. And so, for any external links, um, you, you usually want that opens in a new window option. You want it to open, so if I'm linking to someone else's blog, someone else's e-commerce site or whatever, I want it to open in its own window because I don't want people to lose my, my site. Now let's say, as I said, we can have more than one menu. This particular theme has two menu locations. If you see at the bottom, primary menu, social links menu. We can also see that under manage locations at the top. I kind of like it here better because this shows it in a quicker way. Under manage locations, it says your theme supports two menus. My primary menu is showing my main menu. In my social links menu, I can also show the main menu there. Don't do that. But I could put both of them there, and then it looks weird. Um, because this is expecting... This particular theme has a social links menu. So we need, to use, we need to create a new menu. And on that menu, I'm going to list my Twitter, my Facebook, my Instagram, etc. Not all menu, not all themes will have that social links menu, but there will be different ways to accomplish the same thing. So I want to go back to edit menus. I want to create a new menu. How in the world do I create a new menu? Create new menu, right there. Edit your menu or create a new menu. So for some reason, this is not as consistent as other screens. On other screens, we have something that would say add page, add post. There's no add menu, which is odd. But here we have create new menu. So go ahead and click it under edit menus tab. Create new menu. We'll, we'll give it a name. We'll call it uh, social menu and save. So social menu and then we'll create. Yeah, you see right here? Uh -huh. All right, so now, again, be before we go further, because this always happens, I don't see my menu. I put 10 links. Where is it? I would recommend you set the theme location right away. It's telling you my primary menu currently has the main menu. If yours says the same thing here, don't worry. But this new social menu, I want it to be visible in the social links menu. So activate that checkbox and save it.
Right, so I named the menu, I placed it where I want it, now it's time to put links. This one is going to be links over to my Twitter, to my Facebook, to external links. So these, are, these, these will be custom links. You can make this up or just do what I'm about to do to show you how this works. I'm going to try facebook.com slash PMD Interactive link text Facebook. So I'm putting in a I'm putting in a Facebook address basically. I'm going to put a Facebook address and then a Twitter address as many as I want. So the URL is my company my company's Facebook page and then some text. Remember to add to menu. Next I want maybe twitter.com slash PMD Interactive. And the text is Twitter. You see the idea? I just put in an external address, youtube.com slash PMD Interactive. Question? Yeah, um, on mine it might have said something different just because I was playing with it. Okay. But this should tell you, because we're currently editing the social links menu, therefore there's no parentheses. But if I had other menus in parentheses, it would tell you how those are being used. So you can put these links or anything you want, but, I'm, but this, this menu really is to put in web addresses of social networks. So what else? Let's say Instagram. You should notice here that my company has a profile on all of these networks I've mentioned so far and others, but they all have the consistent username, PMD Interactive. I teach a class on social media. It's actually two months long. We're halfway through it at the moment. Well, halfway through the first month. We've done two weeks, this week is the third week, and then fourth, and then next month. I believe we have, there's a little bit of space left, and the class is on Wednesday nights, 6 to 9.30 p.m. You can still join up if you'd like. But in that class so far, on day one, we talked about Twitter. Day two, we talked about in, uh, Google+. Plus. Day three today, or this week, we're going to talk about Facebook. Next week, we're going to talk about Pinterest. Next month, we're going to talk about Instagram, YouTube, uh, I believe LinkedIn, and Yelp. So the point is social media is also very important for your websites, for your SEO. Because if maybe you're not blogging every month, but hopefully you're on Facebook posting something every once in a while, that also can drive traffic to your site. Obviously, if you don't have any followers on social media, maybe you're not reaching an audience. That's what the social media class is about, getting followers, putting good content, getting traffic. So put in some links, click Save, and then Visit Site. On, on that page, I mean, once we are at the customers, can you put the domain and your social website address in the text? You have to do one. No, I was writing it, but on this particular menu, that link text will not be visible until you hover. So after I put in those addresses and visit site, those, those URLs become icons, and when I put my mouse on it, the text should appear. If it doesn't, that's okay, but these are the icons of the addresses that I just put in. And if I want to rearrange them, I can just drag and drop. Maybe I want Instagram first. Remember to save. If you make any changes, remember to save. Is it short as a little circle without that's um, because if you want to put it in the same It's only going to show the icons of known social networks. Mm -hmm. So if you're putting in an unknown link, it, it won't it'll just put that weird icon with like angles and stuff, right? It's very possible 
operates as custom links. I should see yeah, these are all these kind of links to come up. Um, Can you click on uh, well, Instagram? Click on my triangle on Instagram. You have m dot com slash manager. That's what you You ran an hour this I'm just saying you put m dot com instead of Instagram. The address of Instagram is Instagram.com, not m.com. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. And the navigation will be It will save as soon as you finish editing. Oh, that's the picture you do. So, as you guys look there, this is YouTube. It's YouTube.com slash manager. And you can come to the address, or else it won't go with the address. I'm not sure what happened to my automatic YouTube save. Did you pick up to the still there because we're editing the social menu. The main menu is the one that we display in the menu items. And the social menu displays the way social media will work on. So in case things change, that's okay. But we're currently editing one menu, so it doesn't show up. Well, then it's kind of like to see what the display of the whole thing is. Well, it's going to be nice because that key doesn't have the ones on the ones. Yeah, just the same. Oh, that moves too. But you say it's in the bar. Because then we have a great hand square with the keys. So I might be able to figure something out. Wow. 
All right, everyone. So um, this was our look at menu items, adding menus. And depending on your theme, you may have more than one menu. And some of you are seeing that, well, why don't I see the icons? Depending on your theme. So this particular theme, and we'll talk about what themes are and changing them in just a moment, but this particular theme takes that menu, that special menu location, the social the social menu location and converts them into icons. If you put in a link to one of the networks that is not known to it, like maybe your own website or something, it'll show you a generic icon. But not every theme will show you nice pretty icons just by putting in your Twitter address. It depends on the theme. And later we, we can talk about plugins and widgets, other ways to display the menu items. Uh, as as icons because look at this one of my websites my personal blog where I write about uh, one of my hobbies which is comics look at this I've got all of these icons on the side here and yes I do have profiles on all of these networks and so if you want it to look like that and you don't have a menu if you don't have a theme that automatically shows that we have a way to do it we'll get to it so you know what if what if but if you want to add, you know, Google Ads on the site to make a little money, that's also going to be a plugin or a widget, and we'll, we'll talk about those. But the main thing is, it depends on your theme. This particular site, it has a menu bar that is a simple top menu right here. I've only got one item, about, and I could have drop-down items and more there. Our menu, because of our particular theme, is on the left side. This theme also has another menu in the footer. So maybe I should work on this a little bit more because it's just showing way too much. But I've got a column archives and a column categories and all that empty space. So I can work with all of that. And then, of course, down at the bottom, people might ask, well, how do I remove that WordPress branding? That's going to be a, a little more complex, which we will talk about. But again, it's going to depend on the theme. Some theme authors give you a lot of control uh, to, your, to your themes where you can edit everything about it. Some theme authors will only let you edit some things, and some theme authors will let you edit nothing except for, you know, some basic things. The great thing about WordPress, though, is we will be able to, to go to the code. We will be able to pull up the code here and edit anything we want with a little code knowledge. And obviously that's out of, that's out of a, the experience of most people, but that's why we've got the basic class in the next class where we can explore this a little bit. You're not going to become a pro at all on code, but at least maybe when you look at this you will not be terrified of it. You'll be less terrified of it. Yes? So, when you, try to, when you set up the menu, you have it the way that you want it to be, and then it doesn't appear. And what was the one thing that you said that was really important that you have to do to make sure it displays the menu? If it doesn't appear, it means you have not selected a, a location for it. If you don't have any of these checked on, then there's no place that this menu will exist. So make sure one of them is selected. And depending on your theme, you might have four check boxes here, different places to put your menu items. So when we when we get to the e-commerce aspect of things, that's 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 what we're gonna have. Let's see if I can pull this up just to show you the example. It wasn't working last week, but swapdots.com is a client of ours, and they sell handmade um, stuffed animals as well as wristbands and buttons and such collectibles. So this is a WordPress theme. It's got a menu at the top. 
drop-down elements. Notice how these have little arrows. I'll show you how to do that. That's kind of a cool trick. Little graphics for arrows. Um, sometimes your theme will not show an arrow. Our theme did. It's just a simple triangle. But if we want our own arrows, I'll show you how to do that. But anyway, there's a drop-down, and then there's shop, buttons, custom buttons, wristbands, mom's animals. So all of these are different pages, and they're sub-items of a particular, of a particular uh, parent, and that's the point of indenting them and, and moving them around, rearranging them. See if I can find the site that I like because yeah, this is it here. Okay, so if you if you go to if you do a Google search for HTML arrows, it's on more than one place. Um, okay, well if you search HTML arrows, you get two results htmlarrows.com, some of the corner of the market on that, mm -hmm. or this charactercode.com. I, I like them both, although I know I have used the second one myself. The first one seems to be good for my two-second look at it, but, I, but I've used this one. Charactercode.com slash arrows html codes. So here we can select these non-graphical symbols uh, they're just fonts. Fonts download faster than graphics. But on this particular site, let's say I wanted to use one of these arrows, you can just select it and copy and paste, and it'll, and it'll put that arrow, let's say I want this squiggly up arrow, and copy it, and I'm gonna switch over here, do you see select the menu, social menu or main menu. I'll switch to the main menu, make sure you select it. And when I edit a link, I can paste on the label. The label is the text that's going to appear on the menu. So I copied an arrow from that website and I went back to my menus and I edited the main menu. The social menus, it doesn't seem to matter because it's going to display the icon, not text. So I switched to the main menu, went to select, edit any menu item, so that's clicking a little triangle there, and then under the navigation label I pasted. Save, and then when I view my site I have a little icon there. Well, it's a little font with an arrow, and I got that from that website that I, that I just mentioned. So we've got a few of them, a few interesting arrows. What's the purpose? Just visual interest. So this one, for example, didn't have a built-in triangle that indicates you've got a drop-down menu. Ours over here did. It's this little simple down arrow. This theme didn't have one. So we went over here and we, and we found one of these, this one right here. That, that arrow is the one that we're seeing right here on this site. And so I copied it and pasted it in just like I showed here and now that item has an arrow that it didn't before. So it could be for visual interest so that it looks a little more functional or makes sense. Yes? Yeah, you can just look up uh, HTML symbols or HTML. I Let's see what we get with HTML icons. No, that's not a good one. Yeah, this one this one's a little trickier to search for because they're going to try to give you these graphics instead of icons. Um, let's see, HTML 
icon codes. Oftentimes these are related to an HTML code. So there, there are a lot of built-in icons, um, HTML character codes. Just have to search. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't have any handy. I can look them up, but the, you will be able to find other icons that you can use. Different alphabets, and they're not, they're not a lot of them. There's like hearts and smiley faces and some things. And of course there's emoji. Um, on the font awesome you might not be able to copy and paste, you might have to use the actual uh, icon code yeah. in your site. So you could try this getemoji.com and on this one is going to be kind of the same thing. You go here, you find your icon, you copy it, and then you paste it into your menu items or your posts and it may or may not display. You know, most smart uh, most modern smartphones should be able to display these icons and and the older devices probably not because these things are new like emoji. Labels. Exactly. That's where I'm pasting the mm -hmm. these icons. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this cat icon. Let's see the cat icon. Can I add it to my home? It's in the navigation label. So there we go. So I don't know anything about graphics but I know how to get icons. Mm -hmm. And so getemoji.com, maybe that's the best one to look at nowadays because it's got the, the emoji that we're all kind of seeing and, and all over the place. Uh, although they might not be fully compatible with all devices, unfortunately. But this should be icing on the cake. You should not make a menu based only on these icons because then if someone cannot see the icon, they'll just see boxes, empty boxes. And they won't be able to manage your... You won't, they won't be able to navigate your your site. So this is something that should be icing on the cake. So emoji, how many of you use them? You can admit it. Um, so let me show you, this is funny. Uh, emoji, Moby Dick. They translated Moby Dick into emoji. So you can get the full Moby Dick novel as emoji icons. It's gibberish, but it's interesting. See right here, call me Ishmael. It's two hundred dollars. Anyway, uh, so those are just ways to add some visual interest to your to your websites. And um, emoji is the modern language of the web, but it's not compatible on all devices, unfortunately. Okay, so we'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. This this always go makes everyone go ooh and ah, which is our our design of our site. It's pretty functional. It's clean and modern and straightforward. But maybe that's not the best design for your product, for your company, for your brand. So we'll talk about themes. Themes are a way to change the the look of our site, and themes come in in free and premium and actually they also come in something called freemium so free ones are completely free all the functionality is available nothing to pay for 
Premium usually is you have to pay to use them. And freemium is in the middle where you get a version of the theme that has like maybe 90% of all the functionality and you pay a little bit, there's the premium part, to get that extra bit. And sometimes the freemium perk is that you get, for example, tech support. With the, free, the, with the completely free one, you might just get the tech support of a manual to read or a message board to ask questions at, but the premium one, usually that's going to have one-on-one -on -one email support, and the freemium one usually has some sort of tech support also. So we have freemium and premium and free themes, widgets, plugins, etc., etc. Let's talk about themes, which is the design of our site. Let's go to our dashboard, and wherever you're at, if you hover over appearance, you will get um, themes. Let's click on themes inside of appearance. So inside of themes, I'm sorry, inside of appearance, we've got themes. And this shows I've got three themes built in at the moment. A theme called 2015, 2014, and 2013. And these are official themes coming from WordPress, the creators of WordPress. Every year they put out a, a theme that oftentimes is not that visually interesting looking, but structurally it's very powerful. It often has some of the most cutting-edge features of a theme, but design-wise usually they're not that interesting looking. And so there's three built-in themes, but I want to add a new theme, so we've got at the top here, themes, add new. Click on themes, add new. And it takes us here to the theme marketplace. Featured themes, popular themes, latest themes, and search themes. So these featured themes. So I'm really surprised that these three themes over here are featured because they seem really basic. Some of these others are a little more interesting. So this one's New Lotus. This one is incredible. Floki. Let's say I like one of these. I can, I can hover my mouse over a theme and click Details and Preview. And this will then show you a preview of what the theme could look like, not with your content perhaps, but it'll show you there's a, there's a section on the top for an icon and a menu items. Oh, look at how these animate. When you put your mouse on it, they, they move over and such. A big, bold graphic posts with some animation. So these previews are always going to show the best foot forward. They're always going to say this is this is how your site could look with all the right settings. Because oftentimes what happens, people find a great theme, it looks great on the preview, they install it and has that ever happened that you see a hamburger on a TV uh, commercial? You buy the hamburger and it's squashed and it's on the side and the lettuce is falling out. Well, they make the hamburger look amazing on TV or in that print ad. Sort of the same thing with themes, that they make the theme look the best possible. When you install it, you're going to have to go through the manual and add, change some settings and add some features and such. So I'm going to click the X there. I'm just looking at a few themes here. These are the featured ones. I can go over to Popular. So under Feature, there were 15. Under Popular, there's 2,000. Under latest, there's another 2,000. So access press store, Zinchi Light, Luna. And then I can also search. But let's say, look under latest. Doesn't matter, but look under latest. And anyone that you see here, if you like it, click install. What that does is it connects to the wordpress.org website. Notice that feedback right there. And then it connects to the theme. I chose Canyon 0.0.3. doesn't matter which one you choose. Just click to install a theme. It might be a little slow because we're all accessing it. But it's going to download the theme, install it, and then in a moment we'll be able to use it.
eventually it'll say downloading, unpacking, installing, success. You have to remember to then activate the theme. You can have multiple themes installed, but only one theme active. So I downloaded the Canyon theme, it's installed, but I need to click activate. Okay. Click activate on your theme, and then visit site. It'll tell me the active theme is active theme is Canyon, and then I can visit site. And now my plain old theme from a moment ago has updated to this one. There's my <laughs> Welcome to Yummy. Uh, there's my Hello World. At the top right on my theme, it shows Sample Page and All About Our Amazing Shop. So it changed my menu. I had Home and I had about, and I had my social media, and this theme changed it, but that's normal. Your theme now, your content is still there, but now the design of it, the look of it, has changed. So depending on your theme, things are going to change. And how do I, how does it work? How do I put my own graphic there? Really, you're going to need to read the manual, but oftentimes, you're going to need to go over to the Customize. The customize link. It's found under appearance. Appearance customize. So I think at this point we'll take a break but because you're, you're probably eager to see how can I customize this theme. So you can either explore other themes and download them. The theme that you just downloaded, you can go to appearance customize and see what's there. Don't worry if you make a mistake and mess things up. We can then switch back to another theme easily. So it's three o'clock. Let's take a 10 minute break. When we come back, We'll learn a little bit more, talk a little bit more about themes, and then it'll be the end of the day. I'll turn the printer back on just in case you still want to print, and I would recommend to have sheet number four ready, because by the end of the day we're going to use sheet number four to make a copy of our site here so that we don't start over again next time. We'll be back at 310.